Good morning. Welcome back to the lumber yards. Today I want to take a closer look at the Logosol mill. I've had it for just under a year now. We got it last spring. So this video is going to be two parts. First I'll talk about the basic steps to milling up a log using this system. And then the second part I'll talk about what I like, what I don't like, and maybe compare it a little bit to the two other systems that I'm familiar with. So Alaskan chainsaw milling and bandsaw milling. So let's get started here. My wife pointed out this might sound like static or background noise, but spring has sprung here. Our creek is flowing. Lest you think you're listening to static the whole time, just bear in mind it is the soothing sounds of nature. And that will make your viewing experience that much more enjoyable. This is the Logosol F2 sawmill. I've got it set up for 12 foot logs. You can basically cut indefinitely long lengths by continuing to add more sections but that will start to increase the complexity and getting it nice and leveled if you've got lots of lags to support. It's very, very simple. Basically, we've got some log lifters here. Two of those, that's the deck that the log is going to sit on. And then I've got a rail that my saw will slide on. So we'll see how that goes in action. First thing I'll do, I'm gonna lower my log lifters all the way down to the bottom, make it easier to get a log on here. Now this mill has actually sat here all winter, but it's all aluminum construction, so it's literally, this is just my first time coming at and looking at it after it's melted out of the snow. Lowering the log lifters, sometimes nice with an assistant, so you can ask Kai to come in and just give me some dead weight. What are you calling dead weight? <laughs> talk about this more a little bit later but one of the reasons that we went with the log assault is the portability because we're not always milling here in our yard we're often moving the mill all over the place to different locations remote islands stuff like that it can be broken down into basically pieces that are I think this is about four feet or maybe it's three feet so it can be broken down into three foot lengths and packed into quite a small space but around the property here I can also just pick it up easier from in here So it's quite easy to move, and then I'm going to pick a level spot here to set it up. And these actually could be left on, but uh, I guess I can move them for the winter. We're just putting some legs under there to increase the stability further and ensure that this, tip, this mill's not going to tip backwards once I've got uh, a log loaded on it. So that's basically the milling platform set up, leveled, and with legs that are going to make it a lot more stable so that when I dump my log on here, I'm not going to tip the whole thing backwards. The only other bit then is these log dogs. They just slide on, they'll be used to secure the log. But for now, we're going to leave them off, make it easier to load the log on later. So we'll return to those. So the other major component is the slide or the carriage. Now I've got mine accessorized with a few things like the bar nose steering, the water cooling, the winch, but in its most basic form it's this platform, just the orange platform here with the plastic slides. And that will bolt onto the saw. and slide on the mill. The mill comes with these specialized nuts that let you adapt your saw to connect to that slide or carriage. Everything's standardized to fit your standard chainsaw scrunch. So that's nice, although typically I would use a ratchet. I just didn't have it in my kit because I guess I pulled it out over the course of the winter. So that's the saw mounted on the mill now. Still have full access to fill up the oil reservoir and of course the fuel is easily accessible as well. So I've got mine set up with the hand crank or the winch. 
pushing the saw through without the line is, is just fine, really. What I find I quite like about this string, despite the fact that uh, it breaks more than I'd like, is that it's got some stretch in it. So I find that makes it um, a little easier to just read how much, or it gives me a bit more time to respond when I'm loading up the saw too much. Yeah, it's a little less jerky maybe, and it just it kind of that stretch in the string smooths it out a little bit. So I've liked it. Okay, so now that I've got the saw loaded up on the mill, because this, this is my first time using it this year, I'm just going to check that it's still calibrated well. I'll get the bar lined up over the log lifter. And I've set my lifter to read 16 inches. I've got 15 inches here. But if I look down on my scale, my pointer is kind of sitting between 15 and 15 and a quarter. And that can get confusing when I'm trying to read it. So I remember this from when I put it away last year that it slipped a bit. So I will just adjust this little pointer on my scale get rid of that confusion okay and then I'll just move the saw down the line check it against the other log lifter as well okay so I have those pointers calibrated and then the only other thing that I forgot to mention was I used a string line and I just checked to make sure that my deck so hopefully this will show it but just check that the deck is still nice and flat and use the string line to do that. And you would just adjust that here with these bolts if need be. So that's it, then we're ready to get our log up and start milling. All right, so we're ready to load up. I like to just roll a log that gets us close to the height of the deck, roll it in throw some ramps, could be branches or whatever, and then roll it up. Since this is our only log in this area, we're using something pretty small. So it's gonna be a bit low, but by the time we put the butt of the ramps here, we're gonna be getting close to our back support. Okay? <laughs> yep. I wouldn't always peel the bark off, sometimes you'll just leave it on, cut it off, especially because this log was winter cut and so it wasn't dragged from mud or anything else. But peeling off easily because it sat for a year, so it doesn't hurt if it's going to come off just to knock it off. And then there's that much less material that might dull the chain. So this system here of lifting the log up uh, wasn't ideal, but uh, a bigger log would do the job really, really easily. And then we'd probably want to brace it so that we wouldn't want any overhang like we had, but uh, again, we knew this was manageable. Knew we had the dog for backup and uh, didn't want to drag a bunch of material over here. So, so it's up. So the next step then, we're going to check the taper on the log. So here at the butt, measuring without the bark on, I've got about 16 and a half inches. And here at the tip, I've got about 13 and a half. If I set my log lifters to the same height, then I'm going to take off three more inches of wood in my first cut on the butt versus the tip. Now I don't want to do that, I want to center that. So I want to take an inch and a half off of one side and an inch and a half off of the other. And that will have me basically milling parallel to the grain of the wood. And so that's a better situation to take the taper off of both sides versus taking all the taper off at once. So that means I'll need to, right now, if they're set Equally, I'm going to take three more inches off of this side. So 
So what I need to do is just raise that tip half of that, an inch and a half. And if we're struggling with it mathematically, we can also do it visually. So right now I can see I'm gonna be taking a tiny cut off of the butt and the tip looks like it's gonna be sitting way below the bar. So I've got my butt set to 16. I've raised my tip an inch and a half higher, so 14 and a half inches. And I'll also take a little look at that visually and see what that looks like. That's gonna be a very, very light pass here on the butt and probably next to nothing on the tip. So I'm gonna cut a little bit deeper. Okay, so that looks like a better fit. I've got my dogs in here tightened, holding the log in place. So I'm just gonna start up the saw and then just use the hand crank, draw it through the log, and then I'll just be listening to the saw, feeling it, and just making sure that um, I'm keeping an appropriate load so I'm not pushing it so fast that it revs way, way down, or I'm not just uh, running it at like full revs without any load on it. So just keeping, keeping it cutting, keeping the load on it. So there we go, there's our first cut. Now it's, uh, as I mentioned, deeper at this end. Very light pass as we get towards the tip. So typically I would take another cut, a one inch board now, to get a little deeper into the log here before turning it to continue squaring it. The ratchet system here works in quarter inch increments. So if I want a one inch board, I'm gonna have to move it up five quarters or an inch and a quarter because the chain here makes a quarter inch of sawdust. So I'll move it up five clicks. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now we should be able to get a really good visual. thing. So I've got the log turned here. I've got it dogged into position. I'll just show what's been done there. So as I'm right in tight rolling the log, I'll be leaning over and just taking a look at this post here. And I want this sawn surface to be right tight against that post the whole height of it. So here it is in context, there's my post. There's another post down at the far end. And those posts are 90 degrees to the log bed. So if I have my sawn surface tight against that post, then I know right away that my next cut will be perfectly square to that surface. So that's all there is to getting a square cut, is making sure we're tight to those posts. So again, it may look like I have misaligned it because I'll take a heavier cut off the butt, a lighter one off the tip, and that is the goal. Really don't need the log, the dogs now when I'm sitting down on a flat surface and I still have lots of weight on the log. So now that I have a flat sawn surface against the deck or the log lifters, I now need to make sure I'm, my next cut is going to define the finished width of the boards or the width of the cant that I'm cutting. So obviously I don't want it to be trapezoidal. I want it to be perfectly parallel chunk of wood. So I will now set the two log lifters to the same height. 
all the time from now on. Whenever there is a flat sawn surface against the deck, then these two guys should be set to the same height. Otherwise, you're going to be sawing non-parallel wood. So I would take a look here. I've got about 11 and a half inches of wood here at the small end of the log. And to make my life a little easier later down the line when I cut my final board, it is best if I start, since I'm cutting one inch boards, somewhere on my one inch scale here. So I was, what did I say, 11 and a quarter inches back there. So I'm gonna make my first cut at 11 inches because that's the closest number on the scale. Now, I talked about that in more detail on another video, so I won't repeat that here. But that's just gonna make my life a little easier for my final cut. Dial the log to 11 inches. Same thing here at the other end. I'm gonna back it up to 11 inches once more, take the top off, and then I'm ready just to cut down through the log with one inch boards. So there we have it, the whole process of squaring up the log ready to produce lots of boards now. Um, we do have some rot there. This is an old tree. It's been dead uh, basically since we moved to the property seven years ago. I've been staring at it thinking it should come down. Um, so to get any lumber at all out of it, I'm happy. And I'm hoping that rot doesn't extend too far here. So 11 foot log, um, you know, I might have to cut a few feet off the end of some of the boards, but um, anyways. A lot of, uh, it can seem like a lot of work and all I've produced thus far is a few wainy boards and some slabs, but um, at this point now the boards just start start coming quickly. Um, can basically fuel up and probably just run through the, the whole rest of the log without stopping the saw. Um, so yeah, just as a summary of that process, I started by checking the, the milling platform. So checking that the rail that the saw is gonna run on was nice and straight. Use some string lines for that, uh, although I didn't show that. And then I just checked that it was still calibrated well. So brought the bar in over the log lifters, checked that relative to what our scale was reading. Um, got the, the saw bolted onto that carriage, rolled our log up and uh, the first two cuts we need to offset the two sides to bring the tip end up a little bit um, so that we're compensating for the taper on the log. But once we have a flat sawn surface against the deck, then we will set the two lifters to be the same height and gets a little simpler at that point. If we're thinking ahead about our final cut, we can look at, uh, I've written a little scale for myself, a little chart as to, uh, to what to start at. Um, and then we just, we'll just keep cutting down one inch boards. So that's that. I'll get these cut up and then uh, I'd mentioned I'd also talk about sort of what I like, what I don't like, and um, how I feel I've got lots of experience with the Granberg or Alaskan style mill. Uh, so I'll compare it to that and I have a bit of experience with bandsaw milling as well and talk about that. So yeah, let's finish this log up first though. Um, as we get down here, the logs, the dogs start to become important again. 
because the log's going to be a lot lighter and so we might shift it here on the mill um, and so but obviously I'm not going to put it up vertical now where it's going to uh, get hit by the saw so you do have to start being concerned about that so I'll lay the dog down nice and horizontal and that way I can get uh, really nice and close to it and on my final cut I will have to remove it and so in that case I'll alternate I'll dog at the back there I'd start my cut once I pass this guy then I could slip it back on remove the one at the far end uh, but for now just this one will be adequate so I'll just take this one right off so that I don't forget it